So now we're going to look at a simple example of using an exponentiation cipher with a prime mod. Um, and the really important thing here, as I alluded to in the previous video, is if you try to do this on a regular calculator, it's not going to work. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about what goes wrong um, in contrast to what works well if you use something like Wolfram Alpha, which is uh, smart enough to realize what you want to do when you, when you say the word mod. So uh, here's our message to be or not to be, translated into numbers in the same way as the previous video. Um, and then I chose a mod, and it's really important for this particular kind of um, modular encryption that that mod be prime, because we're gonna use, uh, it's the little Fermat's theorem is really crucial. Um, so 4409, so how did I know that was prime? Well, one way to do it is just take something you think is prime or guess, and then go to Wolfram Alpha and do is prime of that number. And then after crunching a little bit, it'll say, well, I think this is what the input, this is how I'm interpreting the input. And the answer is yes, it's a prime number. Now, there's a, a, uh, another way. Um, if you just do prime of like 500, that's going to be the 500th prime. So that'll guarantee that you'll get a prime. Take a minute. Okay, so you could use, for example, 3571. Remember, for our encryption system with two-letter blocks, you need something that's at least 2727. Uh, yeah, okay, 2728, I guess. Okay, anyway, about 3,000 can work. Okay, so that has to be prime. Now, the key, remember, the, the next key thing is that that has to be relatively prime to 4408 because the little Fermat theorem is all about how um, raising it to the 4408 is going to be um, get you back to where you started. And if you don't use that something that's relatively prime to 4408, you're going to be in trouble. Well, I just picked a prime number that I was pretty sure didn't divide into 4408. But how do you be sure? Well, various ways. You could do a GCD, or you could do another nice thing that um, Wolfram Alpha does. You could factor 4408. OK, that doesn't have a 17 in it, so I'm good. Um, of course, if you do GCD, of 17, 4408, that'll be, that's equal to one, so we're all good. Okay, so now we weren't gonna do the cipher. Well, so now we're going to raise the, uh, the numbers from the plain text to the power of 17, okay? And this is where you really need to be doing something on a somewhat sophisticated calculator. 2015 to the 17 mod, it's suggesting something, somebody's previously done this calculation with a different mod, so mod 4409. Remember it's 4409, not 4408, okay. And it gives us 570, okay. And it is trustworthy, okay. And we can check it, uh, we're gonna check it in a minute by decrypting it, and it would be pretty unlikely that this was the right answer and you know if it didn't decrypt, okay. So here's what goes wrong with most calculators. What most calculators do is they calculate 2015 to the 17th power um, approximately. They calculate it as a, um, uh, a scientific notation approximation, what's called a floating point approximation, not with perfect accuracy, not down to the units digit. Um, and that's probably going to be some multiple of um, 10 or 1,000 or a million or a billion because of the rounding, totally inaccurate. And then if, when you mod it, you're just getting an absolutely and completely um, meaningless answer. Um, and so it's interesting that you can actually write this down in a lot of calculating environments, even a lot of computer programming environments, and it will not be the right answer. So uh, something like Wolfram Alpha is better. Um, there's sophisticated computing environments where you use a package specifically to do large integer computations, um, and you can use one of those. Wolfram Alpha knows when you say mod, and it's a big number, it's probably, it thinks, oh, I, I better do this carefully. Okay, so then we can just keep going. Uh, oh, that's just 205, mod 4409, that's 544. Okay, I'll just do one more. So it's a little clunky, you can't do it um, automatically. And again, if you try to write a computer program for this, you really have to know, uh, what exactly your computer programming environment is doing when it does powers and mods, and it's probably not going to be what you want it to do. Um, and then, okay, so that's that's how we would fill out the rest of these guys. 
not gonna bother to do that. Um, to double check, we could then go ahead and, okay, how did I get this decryption exponent? Well, that's the multiplic the modular uh, multiplicative inverse of 17. Remember mod, now that's mod 4408, okay? Well, so we know how to do that. We use the extended Euclidean algorithm, but there's also a nice little trick. I could do 17 to the minus one. Notice that it thinks so far, I mean 1 17th, but now I'm gonna do mod uh, 44 weight. Okay, and it's like, oh, when you say mod, I'm gonna just do everything in the mod world, and indeed 2593 comes out. Okay, so then our last thing I'll show you is, like, what if you take 570, oops, just kidding. If you take 570, the cipher, cipher text, to the 2593, mod 4409. Okay, so there's, there's this subtle interplay between when you're encrypting and decrypting, it's mod 4409, the prime. When you're trying to figure out how the keys work, it's mod 4408 to get that modular multiplicative inverse. There's, there's kind of two mods that are related here that are working. It's a little tricky. Okay, crunch, 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 2015, it's where we get back to. Okay, we get back to where we started. Good, okay. And note, just if you calculated this out, as an ordinary number, think about how incredibly large that number would be. That would be an incredibly huge, huge, huge number. And you'd have to have amazing accuracy to then figure out exactly what all the digits are and modify 4409. Wolfram Alpha is smart enough that it does what's taught, what they talk about in the book, which is first work relentlessly in the mod, don't ever calculate with ordinary integers, and it's probably smart enough also to do the repeated squaring method for modular exponentiation. So it's actually pretty quick. It did seem like it took a while, but that's actually just internet lag and it just kind of making sure that you really mean what it thinks you mean um, when you write this down. The actual computation, I'm sure, is, is lightning quick. Okay, so that's how you would do um, an exponentiation cipher uh, on this level with the two letter blocks and a kind of a moderately um, sized mod um, and being careful with um, your computing environment.